In this video, I'm going to add on to our last one and talk about some of the side effects that you'll see as you've been on chemotherapy a little bit longer. And you know, it's not your first or second, but it's now your seventh chemotherapy or your eighth chemotherapy. So we've covered fatigue, we've covered nausea and vomiting. I'd like to go next to taste changes, which we'll have another video uh, below that you can link to specifically about this, but it's quite common that people are surprised that their favorite foods don't taste good anymore and that they're craving things that they haven't eaten. I have a patient who's a vegetarian who during chemotherapy started craving hamburgers. So don't be surprised if that happens. I also recommend you don't eat your favorite foods because unless you want to develop an aversion to them, that could be something you no longer love later on and that's a loss. So if you love your mom's chocolate chip cookies and you have them during chemo, you may never want them again. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I, for example, can never eat corn soup because I was given it when I was a child and was sick. So the side effects uh, that really can interfere with quality of life are fatigue, nausea, vomiting, changes in your appetite. Over time, the fatigue can get worse, so I want you to know that. You wanna be careful what you plan to do. Don't overload your schedule. Uh, as I've said in other videos, you don't wanna to plan to run the fundraiser around the time you're getting chemotherapy. You might think it's gonna distract you, but actually you're gonna find yourself spread really thin and feel bad that you let people down when maybe you know, being extra kind to yourself during this time is something you want to emphasize. It's a pretty extreme time in your life. Other side effects that creep up over time are thinning of the hair, and for some people, loss of the hair. And that's not just the hair on your head, it can be over multiple cycles of chemotherapy or eyebrows, uh, it can be the hair on your legs, your pubic hair, etc. cetera. Um, eyelashes seem to be the last to go and they grow in more quickly than other body hair. So it's interesting, it's very upsetting when we lose our eyelashes. Um, it changes how we look, uh, but know that they're made of different hair. They come out later and they grow in very quickly. Over time, you will also notice some skin changes. Your skin may get dry and you'll wanna use extra moisturizer, maybe twice a day, so that your skin feels better. Another thing to know about the skin is if you have more pigment in your skin, you're of Mediterranean heritage or you're a black person getting chemotherapy, you may start to notice that you get um, hyperpigmented spots on your palms or on the back of your hands, meaning just spots that you didn't have before, and also darkening of the nail beds. And that can be really upsetting if you're not expecting it. It's temporary and will go away when you're done with chemo. And along those lines, you can also get darker spots on your tongue and on the palate, the roof of your mouth, and on uh, the inside of your lips. Again, that can be really upsetting if nobody told you it could happen, and sometimes we forget to tell you this might happen. But the thing to know is it's normal and it will go away. You don't even have to wait for your nails to grow out all the way. It actually recedes pretty quickly but it's good to know. Other side effects, diarrhea, constipation. Sounds like, how can you get both of those? But right after uh, some chemo, you can have some diarrhea, and then the diarrhea stops, and all of a sudden, you're really bound up. So it's important to make sure that you have the doctor tell you, can those side effects occur, and what you can have at home to manage constipation and diarrhea, because both of those can make you really uncomfortable in your stomach. And most of the things we use are available over the counter. Sometimes we do need to give you something as a prescription. Another set of side effects or things you need to know about as you go into chemotherapy is that some chemotherapy will lower the number of white blood cell counts, red blood cells, and platelets that you have in your body. Not all chemotherapy does this and not all of it does it to the same extent. Your white cells are the cells involved in fighting infection. If you get a fever, you'll want to let your doctor know, and if the fever is low enough and has lasted long enough, it's very likely that you'll need to have blood work to make sure that your white cell counts are still 
in a healthy range. If your white cell counts are low and you run a fever, it may be that you have a bacterial infection in your body. This is a medical emergency. This doesn't happen all that often, but it happens enough that you need to be aware of this. It will be on your instruction sheet from your medical team to call if you have a fever, and they'll even tell you the temperature at which their office considers a fever. If you have a fever and it goes down with Tylenol or with aspirin or with ibuprofen or naproxen, that's still a fever. So just because it went away doesn't mean it's not important in your care. If your red blood cells go down with treatment, and we tend to see this with more and more cycles or numbers of treatments, you might notice some fatigue and shortness of breath. Sometimes we need to give people the gift of a transfusion from a volunteer donor so that you feel um, fitter and that you're more able to stay on schedule with your chemotherapy. Our blood supply is very safe. It's tested for so many things. It's also tested to make sure it's a match for you so that you don't have a reaction to the donor blood. If you're a friend or family member of somebody going through this, see if you can donate blood yourself. We're always short of blood, not just for people with cancer, but this is a plug for donating blood. If you're on medications, you can still donate blood. Um, it doesn't hurt, it's very quick, and we are always very grateful in the medical profession when people donate blood. Platelets tend not to go as low. Platelets are these tiny little cells that help us clot so we don't bleed or have too big a bruise. Some chemotherapy is more likely than other chemotherapy to lower the platelets. But if you notice that you're getting easy bruising and your doctor tells you your platelets are low, that all makes sense. Rarely do we have to modify, delay, change the doses of your chemotherapy because of red cell counts or platelets. Sometimes we do for white cell counts. We also can help prevent your white cells from going too low for too long by giving you shots that go under the skin, something called growth factors. And there are different brand names for growth factors. They don't make you grow taller, but they stimulate growth of white blood cells in your bone marrow. Bone marrow is in the long bones of your body, in your pelvis, even in our ribs, in our spine, and the growth factors can stimulate white cells to grow. Not everybody needs them, and if you get them when you don't need them, you can have this sort of exuberant response in your bone marrow and that can cause some aches and pains. So if you wonder why we're not giving it to you, it's because we know if we give it when it's not necessary, it's not you know, a walk in the park. It's like a party in your bone marrow and it's making a lot of noise. It's very disruptive. Um, in terms of uh, other symptoms, some people feel aches and pains. When they get chemotherapy, some chemo is more or less likely to cause that. Um, the drugs like docetaxel, the brand name of which is Taxotere, or paclitaxel, the brand name of which is Taxol, they can cause some muscle pains. Those can be severe enough that you find yourself taking medicine to alleviate that discomfort, but it's not in everybody that it happens. Over time, if you are somebody who has functioning ovaries, your ovaries may, because of the chemotherapy, go to sleep for a little while, or they may stop working. If you're in your 40s, you're much more late 50s, or I'm sorry, your 40s, late 40s, or early 50s, and you still have ovarian function, you may go into permanent menopause. So you're going through breast cancer treatment, now chemotherapy, and now you're having menopausal symptoms. Yep, and it kind of sucks, but we have ways of helping you manage those side effects. You just need to let us know that this is interfering with your life and to what extent. So we need to know this is really making it hard for you to get through chemotherapy or hard for you to sleep. Don't just tell us the symptom, but tell us what it's impacting because then we get a better picture of the impact on your life. There are lots of other tips and tricks for managing side effects. I've gone through the ones that I've learned over the years are the most salient ones, the ones we see the most often, the ones that are most important to people. It's important to know that we can't cover them all in a short video. If there are common ones or questions you have, 
comment below and then what we'll do is we'll make a video about them. So if there's a side effect you think we should have covered, let us know and we'll respond to that. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about your breast cancer and your treatment options, go to yerba.com for your personalized report. And if you like this video, click like and subscribe. What that does is it lets other people just like you or who have similar questions to you find this video.